What defines a bucket list roller coaster? To me, a bucket list coaster is a ride you are most interested or intrigued to experience. It should also be a ride that you have no tentative plans to experience. Because of the latter, you'll be seeing a very small amount of American roller coasters on this list. Also take note that this list isn't in any particular order, even if it may appear to be so. That said, I'm not taking ride quality into account as much as my level of interest for riding these coasters are. One last thing that I should mention is that I am not going to be including any coasters that are currently under construction or aren't available to the public yet. Of course, we all know that rides like Iron Gwazi and Conda are going to be on every enthusiast bucket list when they open, so I just decided to leave that entire category of rides out of the list. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed already, it would mean a lot if you choose to do so. Not only does it fight against the YouTube algorithm, but it also motivates me greatly to continue to produce videos like these. Now with that all said and done, let's dive right in with my top 20 bucket list roller coasters in the world. Coming in at the number 20 spot is actually not the number 20 spot, it's the number 21 spot. I really wanted to throw in an honorable mention because I feel like I just had to mention this coaster in today's video. The ride, known as DC Rivals Hyper Coaster, operates at Warner Brothers Movie World in Queensland, Australia. This coaster looks amazing, there's no way around it. I'd argue it's one of the top 10 best roller coasters in the world from the looks of it, so why is it not on this list? To be honest, it was just up against so many other rides that I am beyond intrigued to experience. The elements on DC Rivals are incredible elements, but they're also all elements that you can find on other roller coasters around the world. Granted, I don't know any other ride out there where you can take these elements backwards, and sure enough, DC Rivals probably executes these elements better than 99% of the coasters that have them. Trust me, if I had one more spot to work with, which I actually kind of just created anyway, Ways, DC Rivals would be getting even more of a spotlight, but I just couldn't find it in me to put it in the top 20. Again, amazing coaster and one that I know I've got to ride one day, but it's just not as interesting as the other 20 coasters on this list. Okay, so the real number 20 spot is Coaster Through the Clouds at Nanchang Sunaglan in Nanchang, China. China's largest roller coaster to date, Coaster Through the Clouds, is absolutely gargantuan. Without knowing the stats, I would have guessed from images that it's easily in the 300-footer territory. Interestingly enough, it's not quite there. It actually stands at 243 feet tall, but because of the modest terrain, the drop spans a little bit further at 260. The stats aren't the only reason this coaster makes the list, though. It's actually that sheer sense of speed that the ride flawlessly maintains till the end. I honestly don't care much about the elements in particular. It could just be a bunch of overbanked turns, <clears throat> Millennium Force, but hey, I love that ride, and if Coaster Through the Clouds is even remotely similar to Millie, then it's rightfully deserving of a top 20 spot. Number 19, Boardwalk Bullet at Kima Boardwalk in Texas. One of the few US coasters to make this list, Boardwalk Bullet has just about everything I love about wooden roller coasters. First of all, it's a gravity group coaster, which is the first good sign with this ride. It's also a very long experience despite the small footprint. And actually, let's talk about that ladder a bit. The layout on Boardwalk Bullet is literally genius, as it has more crossover sections than any other coaster on Earth. In other words, the track flies under and over previous track segments close to 25 or so times. This means that you are literally flying through the coaster's wooden structure for close to the entire duration of the coaster. This ride is going to be a bit of a tricky one for me to get to, seeing as it's in the greater Houston area and that I'd have to justify flying there strictly for this coaster and the nearby Iron Shark to experience it. That said, I think if I paired it in with another big city, it would make going out to ride this thing more than worth it. Number 18, Starry Sky Ripper at World Joyland in Jiangsu, China. First thing you'll probably have noticed by the end of this list had I not mentioned it, is that Starry Sky Ripper made it on here, but Flying Dinosaur at Universal Studios Japan didn't. Before we continue, let me get some things straight. Absolutely, I think Flying Dinosaur is the king of all flying coasters. That said, its inversions aren't as unique as those found on Starry Sky Ripper. And of course, I ride Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain all the time, so I know what a crazy pretzel loop feels like. To be honest, the only new thing really exciting me on Flying Dinosaur is that first crazy and version, that 720 degree thing. Only thing is, Starry Sky Ripper also has that, and that's not all, it also has a vertical loop right after, a weird twisting element right after that, and a double heartline roll right after that. All three of these maneuvers are unique to the B&M flying coaster, you can't find them on any other ride of its kind on Earth. Hopefully this explanation made sense, I'm just so interested in those wonky elements on Sky Ripper, which is why it finds itself a spot in my top 20 bucket list coasters. Number 17, Light Coaster at Legendia in Korsov, Poland. As you all know, Vekoma has really made a complete 180 in ride quality recently. Once upon a time, they were constructing boomerangs and SLCs, and now we have these Bermuda Blitzes, Firestorms, and Shockwaves. The reason Light Coaster in specific finds itself a spot on this list is because it was really our first taste into what modern day Vekoma was really capable of. Shifting away from that topic, it was also a pretty important coaster for Poland. Poland was never really known to be heavy on roller coasters until 2016 when Formula opened at Energylandia. The nearby 
Vanilla Gen DS saw that they really had competition and literally got the same manufacturer to build a ride that could flex all over Formula. That also brings up another question though. Some might say, well, wasn't Formula the first awesome next-gen Vacoma coaster? Well, yeah, it was, but until Let Coaster was built, I don't think anyone was really paying attention to this ride. Also, Let Coaster is just an incredible creation in general. That layout is unbelievably masterful and its series of elements are top-notch. Those three reasons especially should make it pretty obvious as to why Let Coaster is deserving of a spot on this list. Number 16, Terra and at Fantasia Land in Vril, Germany, and All Speeds at Chengdu Sunak Land in China. So even though All Speeds is still technically under construction, it's a clone of a coaster that does currently exist, which is why I'm including it in here. Terran is mostly what I'll be talking about though, because that coaster has received nothing but rave reviews since it opened in 2016. Where do we even begin with this ride? Perhaps the incredible rock work engraved into the layout is worth mentioning? Also, the layout itself looks outstanding with its rapid fire twists, turns, and little airtime hills, all while it's weaved in and around this aforementioned rock work. I really don't know what else there is to say about Terran, but it's just a magical ride and everyone that rides it says this is the case. It's honestly so believable. Number 15, Python and Bamboo Forest at Nanchang Sunak Land in Nanchang, China. The second coaster from this park to make the list, Python and Bamboo Forest is a GCI coaster with one of the greatest layouts in the world. And honestly, everything about this ride from the entrance to the trains, the hilly setting with bamboo all around, it also screams badassery. And then you get into the layout, which is just flat out amazing. You rise up to this 160 foot max height, which is almost unheard of for a wooden coaster, and then from there you are hauling the rim all the way through. You've got these larger elements in the first half and smaller ones in the second half, but unlike most coasters, it almost seems like Python and Bamboo Forest is building up speed the entire ride duration. Like I mentioned earlier, that hilly terrain really means that this coaster can continue to blaze through its elements till you hit that final break run. Because of the layout, as well as the pacing, setting, airtime moments, Python and Bamboo Forest is a coaster I know I've got to at least try to ride one day. Number 14, Pyrenees at Parque España in Mia, Japan. In my opinion, Pyrenees looks to be the single best B&M inverted coaster in the world, ahead of Katuna at Mirabilandia in Italy and Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa in Florida. Why, you may ask? Well, simply put, the sequence of elements is incredible and the pace it takes these elements is even more incredible. Think of Pyrenees as a larger Batman clone. Same crazy pace, same whip, similar elements, but just on a larger scale. I already love those rides, so this is one of those coasters straight from my dreams. It's also an aesthetically pleasing ride with that helix threading the second vertical loop, and as well as this, there are some rather unique elements on this coaster. One of them is that low to the ground turn after the second vertical loop. Katoon in Italy also has that same maneuver, but no B&M invert in America is something quite like that. Also, after hitting that trimless mid-course break run, there are actually a couple of hills that look like they deliver some decent airtime on an invert. If this isn't a full package inverted coaster, I really don't know what is. I really hope to get on this thing one day. Number 13, Outer Bank Jungle Trailblazer clones at Fanta Wild Asian Legend and Fanta Wild Dreamland Zhangzhou in China. Just to clarify, there are primarily three different Jungle Trailblazer clones in China. The first is the most common, the inverting version. This also looks amazing, but wasn't quite enough to crack my top 20 list. Then there's one Jungle Trailblazer without an inversion that is actually a near replica of Fjord Flying Dragon at Happy Valley Tanjin. Last but certainly not least, there's two Jungle Trailblazers with two side-by-side -side outer banking 90 degree bank turns as their signature elements. As as well as that, the entire layout is entirely different than the inverting counterpart. These two coasters have some of the best pacing of all the gravity groups in the entire world. The elements are also seemingly perfect execution-wise, and from what I've heard, there's even that wooden coaster bite to them which I love. Like Python and Bamboo Forest, this is another coaster I've at least got to try to ride one day. Number 12, Hakuge at Nagashima Spa Land in Mia, Japan. More so than any other coaster on this list thus far, if Hakuge isn't already on your bucket list, what are you even doing? This coaster opened with many enthusiasts thinking it was a lower to mid-tier RMC because of its pacing at the time. But over time, this thing started to speed up like crazy and suddenly it wasn't that low to mid-tier RMC we were all thinking it would be. And then came the reviews. Everyone that got to ride Hakuge since its 2019 opening claimed it's a top RMC easily and possibly even better than rides like Zadra and Steel Vengeance. At this point, my expectations for the ride are sky high, but I'm honestly doubtful it won't meet my expectations. Every single element on this thing looks like it was executed to perfection in typical Rocky Mountain construction fashion. I cannot wait to eventually ride this thing though because I have a feeling it'll end up being one of the best coasters in the entire world. Number 11, Tea Express at Everland in Yongingsi, South Korea. This ride just looks incredible. It's literally a combination of El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure and Balder at Liseberg, both of which received rave reviews from enthusiasts. Tea Express is such a powerful and interesting blend, and what especially catches my eye right off the bat is that first El Toro-esque sustained ejector hill. This looks to be the best of all the airtime moments as found on the Intamin Prefab coasters. As for that drop, it also looks to be the best drop of all four Intamin Prefab coasters out there. 
and then you've got these incredibly fast rapid fire turns before the mid course that look wicked intense. From there on out, the balder portion of the layout begins and you are literally going through balder's layout for the most part, with the only difference being that you're taking these hills faster than balder does. Oh, and away from the layout, I haven't even begun to mention how remarkable that hillside setting looks to be. All things considered, I can't believe this ride even exists. This is a definite top 20, maybe even top 15 coaster on this earth. Number 10, Zadra at Energylandia in Zader, Poland. Much like Hakuge, here's another massive RMC coaster that has a series of elements that was executed to perfection. There's an astonishing balance of large-scale elements, compact elements, elements engraved into the structure, violent elements, sustained elements, intense elements. Yeah, I think you get the point. Even if this ride isn't as airtime focused as a ride like Steel Vengeance is, that doesn't even matter to me. The fact is, you've got such a remarkable balance of elements, intense in both positive Gs, negative Gs, and even lateral Gs. If Let Coaster already wasn't enough of a reason to get you out to Poland, Zadra is out here looking like one of the best hybrid coasters, actually scratch that, one of the best coasters on this earth. Number 9, Soaring with Dragon at Hi-Fi Sunak Land in Hi-Fi China. There's so many reasons to why I'm literally in love with this coaster. Its sheer scale is massive. It does that swing launch thing better than any other coaster I've seen in the world. It also has a great mix of large scale and low to the ground elements. And also look at this theming. Do you see this freaking dragon statue? Like what in the China is that? This ride just does everything well for a launch coaster. I actually don't know if I'd change anything about it. Of course, I haven't yet ridden it, so I'm just judging it by the looks of it. But come on, you have to admit that this coaster is serious seriously impressive, even in pictures and videos. Number 8, Hades 360 at Mount Olympus in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. By far, my highest ranked US coaster in terms of bucket list items is this one right here. Hades 360 is one of those coasters that you saw pictures of all these years ago and said, damn, I have to go to Wisconsin for this. The way it literally shoots up out of that world's longest underground coaster tunnel, or for the ride sake, I'll call it the Underworld, it literally launches up into this 360 degree corkscrew inversion. On a wooden coaster, guys, it's just such a crazy series of elements. Also, the pacing to this ride is simply unbelievable. You dive into this tunnel directly after the drop, so you are literally blazing through this pitch black tunnel at 60 miles per hour. Oh, and you get to do it again after the corkscrew and overbank turn that follows. Can you guys see why I'm so obsessed with this ride? I literally don't care if it's rough or shaky. As long as that layout lives up to its name, I'm content with breaking this as high as I do on my bucket list. Number 7, OCT Thrust SSE 1000 at Happy Valley Wuhan and Bullet Coaster at Happy Valley Shenzhen in China. These two Chinese launch coaster clones are, in my opinion, some of the most underrated looking launch coasters on the face of our planet. It boggles my mind when people praise Max Force so much and they fail to realize that freaking OCT Thrust and Bullet Coaster even exist. These coasters lack any real attention from enthusiasts. Of course, it doesn't help that they're all the way out in China, but these rides really do look unbelievably awesome. You've got that crazy fast launch and then up and over this massive top hat element into this large drop that takes you into a tunnel, which then spirals you upwards into this airtime thing. And then you have an outward banking maneuver that reminds me so much of an RMC element and then an uber intense helix that spirals and never stops. That's really it. It's a short ride, but it sure as hell isn't shorter than Max Forest, and those elements really make me not care at all about the somewhat short ride duration. Number 6, Dota Dompa at Fujiku Highland in Yamanashi, Japan. From some Chinese SNS launch coasters to another in Japan, Dota Dompa is another short ride that packs a furious punch. First of all, that launch by itself is a reason alone for me to put this coaster on this list. It's the world's fastest accelerating launch, and it takes you from 0 to approximately 112 miles per hour in 1.6 seconds. That fact just blows my mind every time I think about it. Following this, you dip down into this rainbow tunnel and through a massive turn with a view of Mount Fuji before a humongous vertical loop. Then you turn into the brakes. So yeah, it's a short ride, but again, it's nothing like Max Force's ride duration. And also again, I don't care that it's a short ride because that series of elements, especially at the beginning of the layout, make it a bucket list coaster already. Number 5, Der Schwertuskarnen at Hansa Park in Sierksdorf, Germany. This is another coaster that seems like it's straight from my dreams. It has a perfect combination of extreme thrills and incredible theming. That is something that so few coasters around the world are able to achieve. I'm not going to talk about the theming much because 1. I haven't ridden this coaster and therefore don't know what it's all about, and 2. It's considered a spoiler to do that. Let's just get right into the layout. You rise up a 200 something foot tall lift hill inside of a beautiful building before dropping down back into sunlight. Then you head up into this really strange, not inverting sea serpent-esque element that's not only gargantuan, but it might also be the only element of its kind anywhere in the world. After this, it's all low to the ground, fast-paced, crazy intense twists, turns, and airtime hills. This blend in the layout mixed with the thematics and surprises make this a clear bucket list coaster for me. It really checks up every single box for what I look for in a good roller coaster, but it also goes above and beyond in so many other categories as well. Number 4, Dueling Dragons on Guangzhou Sunakland in Guangzhou, China. 
Reoccurring theme, I know, but you want to talk about a coaster straight out of a dream because this right here is exactly that. Can I just start off by saying, dang, Intamin is a genius. I know this doesn't duel as often as intended since the park has had attendance issues since its opening, but it was designed to do so and it's just a brilliant layout in general. You've got a sit down track at the top and an inverted track at the bottom, and at first it acts as an Intamin impulse coaster going back and forth through a swing launch. Honestly, if this was just a side by side Intamin impulse coaster, it would already be so cool, but no, that's just the beginning. Look at these crazy elements and inversions that follow. Do you see why this coaster is so dreamlike? Both sides interact with each other to perfection and dive over and under each other constantly. It really just goes beyond words. So because of that, I'm done trying to explain how amazing this ride looks to be. If you've ridden Dueling Dragons, please let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments because I am seriously interested. Number three, Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park in Haslo, Germany. This right here is what Intamin themselves would argue as being their finest work ever. This coaster is a masterpiece in every single category, the layout, the pacing, the setting, and so much more. It really is an impressive ride and could very well be the best or second best coaster in all of Europe. I know some could argue that it's a bit of a repetitive layout, but there's no way in hell that's a downside on this coaster. It can be as repetitive as it wants to be and honestly would still be one of the best coasters on earth. The series of elements on this thing is flawless with that incredible drop, incredible first hill, incredible first overbank, and the repeat numerous times. This occurs all the way until the end of the ride where you weave in and around this forested setting with several small ejector airtime hills. Intamin was right, this really is a masterpiece of a coaster and I don't think this can be argued at all. Number two, Wood Coaster at Night Valley in Shenzhen, China. I know earlier I was talking about Python and Bamboo Forest and how it's one of GCI's best paced roller coasters and just best in general. Well, it would be the best if it weren't for one ride that I nearly refuse to believe exists. Wood Coaster is the perfect wooden roller coaster. Its elements are unbelievable and are taken at a flawless pace. Not only that, but look at the setting, guys. It's an unbelievable setting. These few things are the recipe for a world-class wooden roller coaster and it goes to show with this ride. It's really kind of a difficult coaster coaster to get to, not just because of its location in China, but also because of the park it's in and how secluded it is. But to me, this makes it all the more worthy of a top spot right here on my bucket list. Number 1, Edge and Nika at Fujiku Highland in Yamanashi, Japan, and Dino Konda at China Dinosaurs Park in Hangzhou, China. This probably wasn't really a surprise if you were trying to think about the coasters that I haven't included on this list yet. Edge and Nika and Dino Konda aren't really clones, but they are extremely similar in a way where their layouts are echoed and that they're both far crazier versions of X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I want you to keep in mind that X2 is already one of the craziest rides in the world, so Edge and Nika and Dino Konda being crazier literally makes these two rides some of the most chaotic coasters on the planet. It. The few dull moments found on X2, like that carousel turn and inside Raven turn, are completely fixed here. On Edge of Nika and Dino Konda, you do a backflip rising up that first Raven turn. As for the carousel turn, that doesn't even exist on these two coasters. Instead, it's a crazy intense overbank where you're rotating throughout. Oh, and where X2 has that awesome backflip, Edge of Nika and Dino Konda put it on crack with that 0G roll backflip. So pretty much what that element is, is you're rotating simultaneously with the tracks rotation, which is literally the most brilliant thing I've ever heard. And for all these amazing elements on X2, you can still find them on these two rides. It just adds more. It's really no wonder why these are at the top of my bucket list. They are the craziest coasters on earth, and craziness is what I look for in a good roller coaster. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed hearing about my top 20 bucket list roller coasters in the world. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you considered subscribing to the channel and liking the video if you found it interesting. Also, let's get some discussions and comments flowing down below about what your top bucket list coasters are. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.